Hey folks and welcome on into something completely different. Today we're going to be doing a figure model. I found this beautiful Viking figure that we are going to paint. You guys are going to love this. So I recently got into 3D printing, mostly because I wanted to be able to make my own parts, um, diorama bits, stowage parts for my tank. So I decided to get a 3D printer and get into printing mo models. Um, as you guys saw in my last Panther video, if you didn't see that, go ahead and check it out. Um, I got to do some 1 scale figures. Um, today we're going to be doing a 1 10th scale figure. So we get to practice on our figure modeling on something that's a little bit bigger. So I want to start with this base, which I just primed black. And then what I did was I took my dry brush colors, like gray, I actually took a chipping color, and I'm just going over these rock highlights, and you can see how it brings out the color of the rock. I mean, these look like real rocks. And then the other parts of this are smooth, and you're gonna see what I'm gonna do here in a moment with that. But again, I wanted to take some, some different colors that we see uh, on rocks, like so the grays, the dark reds, and here I put like a sand color on. We're just trying to make those detailed lines of the rocks pop with the dry brushing. Dry brushing is such a great technique. You guys saw me use it on the tank on my Panther. You guys are seeing me use it here on this base for these rocks. Dry brushing is just a great way to bring out details in a highlight way. So now we're going to be adding snow. Those smooth areas are actually snow, or at least I'm making them be snow. So what we're doing is we're taking some of this stuff I found from um, ammo that actually has like a two-part mixture okay so we take this binder and we take some of this powder and we mix it together and it turns into like this paste and it's really nice because it's a self-leveling kind of paste um, but it also has granules in it so when it dries it dries nice and smooth like fresh fallen snow and you just have to carefully place it on as you see i'm doing here you just kind of like placing it on you're not pushing it around and whatnot and look how it finishes it looks like just lumps of like kind of wet fresh snow on top of these rocks and it really sets the scene for our viking okay i just have which is so great so now what i'm going to do is I, I primed all the parts and we're going to do a zenithal over it with a white a white uh, paint um, you can do an off-white like i know a lot of folks like to use deck tan you can use a cream white either way um, i'm pretty sure i just used plain satin white here and what we're trying to do is create that zenithal light that overhead light as if we're simulating daylight so we had already primed these parts in black and now we're actually um, giving them the zenithal in white and again you're gonna see what that does as we put our other layers of paint on top of it so now we're gonna switch to old rust for these boots okay old rust um, again I'm an armor modeler so I have a lot of colors for armor and old rust is one of them and old rust is actually a beautiful color for leather um, it just really really works so um, rather than taping things off, I wanted to keep trying this masking putty because you guys saw me working with this on the Panther again um, in, the, in the previous videos and I'm just like I want to try this stuff out on the boots so I just wanted to show you kind of how I was wrapping it up. Not much different than what you do with tape but um, I feel like it's a little bit faster than just traditional tape. Um, it has its pros and cons and we'll talk about those but then what I wanted to do is just give this fur lining on the boots a sand grout color again it's like a light grayish brown color I'm um, just trying to simulate like fox hair or maybe not fox hair because foxes are red maybe like uh, wolf hair whatever kind of fur that these Vikings were using on their on their clothing um, so I just wanted again wanted to show you how I was doing the masking so I switched over um, well I, I kept masking but over top of the sand growl I had just painted because I want to paint this uh, leg and this is where we get into the non armor colors this bright violet from ammo uh, really is a nice color um, and I actually used reference photos of uh, Lagertha from uh, the Vikings if you've ever seen that series um, she always had like purples and teals and I really wanted to uh, use that as my reference so that's what i was doing here is just painting some purples on again totally new for me i'm not used to painting all these colors these are way too bright 
Um, so after I painted the purple, I went back with this, this shade. I started uh, getting up some shades. So again, colored shades that we don't really have in our armor collection. I found some really good contrast paints on uh, with Citadel, and they have colored uh, what I would consider uh, washes, but you can actually airbrush them on. They give a nice uh, touch of color. So then I went over and did those little ropes on her boots. And now what we're going to do is skin tones. I want to show you guys how I learned to do skin tones. So first we start with a pink zenithal. So rather than the white zenithal that we did in the beginning, we're going to do a pink okay um and maybe this work, works better for you know more of these fantasy type or you know larger models it will work for our uh miniature models military models as well so this technique is universal so i'm going to show you this you start off with pink and again it's pink because white desaturates whereas the pink is actually going to keep some color so we're, we're going to do the pink zenithal over all of the fleshy bits of this character and there's a good amount, more so than our normal military uh, miniature models. So you can see how it's just pink and black. Now the trick here is we're gonna use this transparent red color from Vallejo and we are going to paint over all the black. So from the, it's like a reverse zenithal, right? We're gonna come in from the bottom and we're gonna use this dark red, trans, it's a transparent red, um, just to go over that black and what it's gonna do is it's going to to hide that black but keep it like a really dark red and in the interstitial areas between the black and the pink it turns into like this dark purple so you naturally have this gradient just by spraying the pink from the top and the transparent red from the bottom you just have this nice pink to dark red gradient pink to purple to dark red and then what we're going to do is use this flesh set so we're going to go from left to right using natural flesh fairy flesh and highlight skin these are all vallejo colors and they're just so perfect i did use this same exact setup on my miniature models on the panther um, but in this case i could actually airbrush them so we're going to start with the natural flesh and go over kind of from the top down this is almost like you're spraying a zenithal again you're going to notice we're going to always going to come from one direction with these. So the natural skin's all going to come from up top because we don't want to just cover over all of them, that nice gradient we just did. So we're going to do the natural flesh again from the top, almost like a zenithal. And you can see how we start to see those colors coming together. And then the next step is we're going to take the fairy flesh and kind of do the same thing, but on a smaller scale, right? So we're not going to cover as much, still keeping that zenithal type you know coming from the top um, but we're not going to spray the whole area just kind of like highlights so think of this like highlighting the uh, flat plates on our tanks right the, the plates that are on top of the tank the top of the turret this is kind of almost like your new base color so we're just getting kind of the middle and then the last step is the highlights you can see here again just like highlighting a tank where instead of highlighting the commander's cupola we're going to highlight um, the parts of skin that are standing out the most like the forehead here or the chest or the thighs whatever is sticking out the most into the light and then the last step is to take this medium flesh this is kind of the blend okay between the dark and the light so what you're going to do is it's kind of got an orangish tone to it but it works so well it, it's like some magic ingredient I, I can't explain it um, but you just shoot this stuff from the bottom, kind of like that reverse zenithal I mentioned earlier, um, but you're gonna just use it to blend the dark areas to the lighter areas, and it just looks so good. I mean, it just brings the whole thing together, and you have this beautiful, natural skin tone that is, um, I mean, you can literally go look for yourself to see how much it match matches. I mean, look at yourself, look yourself in the mirror, and look at all the gradients you have on you, depending on how the light hits you. The last step here, um, it's just to, to give it a little bit more of a yellow hue. I took some yellow uh, that's transparent yellow and I really thinned it down. It was like two or three drops of yellow and a whole cup of water. Um, and I'm just blasting this from very far away just to give it a little bit of a yellow hue and kind of blend it all together. Again, it's kind of like using a yellow wash. Um, so then I, I came back and I took uh, some sand grout after I... Um masked off the legs i took some sand grout just like we did on the boots and i went over all the fur of her jacket and her cloak um cloth 
whatever that long thing is it's it, it's just wanted to I just wanted to cover it with that same color again to kind of get that fur again if it's gray fox maybe it's gray fox I guess foxes can be different colors than red I'm just used to seeing red ones where I live so anyway uh, coming back with the uh, the rusty color um so we're gonna paint this brown I don't know if I used uh, the same rust color as the boots but still I used a brown very similar for the leather on her belts um, and you can just see how I'm just hand painting at this point right so the airbrushing is mostly done because uh, now we're into the details so again we have this leather belt and there's I was really shocked as I was going through this model how many little details there are and uh, how, how much brown there is uh, again this uh, this model was so so well done um, so I switched over to light wood because um, there's some what I would consider wooden blocks on on her belt um, like pieces that are actually holding her belt together and some decorative pieces again that look very Nordic to me um, have some cool symbols on them again really awesome details and uh, I was thinking well they got to be either wood or metal and I'm thinking more wood so the way they're carved they look like wood carvings and then we have these little wooden I don't know if they're cups flask what have you so painted all the wood that I could find and then uh, on her leg um, I actually did notice that there were a cute a few tears so I went back with the I think it was the fairy flesh and I just very carefully filled in those uh, cut marks I guess or what do you want to say the the tears yeah the tears in her leg uh, cloth and uh, you can see it just really looks nice so then going back to the uh, the fur and now that we have the brown painted I took this uh, nice brown shade it's like a light brown sh uh, shader um, you can use it with a brush but I, I think it's really nice to just airbrush it on and I went over all the browns that we did the wood and the belts and the sand growl and then what I did was I, f I found this perfect teal color again these aren't colors we have in our armor collection just because the, I mean the French kind of had like some tealish colored tanks but not this bright so um, I wanted to try these contrast paints out and one of the things I saw with contrast paints is that when you paint them on they actually kind of act like a paint and a wash together so I wanted to try that out and uh, here I actually went back and uh, using some panel liner I wanted to bring out those details on the wood that I was telling you guys about just because I was like these details look so good um, but I need to bring them out and uh, the brown shade that I used didn't uh, really go into the recesses enough so I went back with some panel liner and uh, did that so then uh, moving on I came to this section where we're actually painting the uh, same purple color as her leg cloth now up on her upper body on her chest um, painting that same purple there um, and then again going back over the details just like we did on her bottom half um, you can see in the background I do have the bottom half in place already so I did finish up the teal um, on her on her cloth bottom pit whatever that thing is so I switched over to this Saigor brown again this is a really nice brown color another citadel color you can tell I, I'm trying out these citadel colors because I, I hear so much about them for for modeling uh, for for figure modeling and uh, this color I will say is quickly become one of my favorite browns because again the, it's a contrast paint so it gives you coverage and it also gives you contrast all in one because it actually acts like a really thick wash and it just looks so good uh, I went back over everything with kind of a little bit of a shade just to spray it just like I did before. Uh, used that uh, flesh shade color which is like a light brown shader and just sprayed over that to kind of hue it down a little bit from the white. Uh, make it a little bit warmer with a little bit more brown to it. So then I went over some details like um, she actually had a wooden necklace on. Again, like I actually was like discovering details that the artist put into this as I was moving along. And I found this armband and I painted it uh, like a metal color. I thought it looked really good. And then same thing with her shoulder um, armor piece here, um, which has a really cool design on it. I painted that in metal as well. And uh, again, I just the details on these 3D prints, oh my gosh. I mean, I, I'm sure there's other ones that are even more detailed, but I was really impressed. I didn't realize the level of details that were on this model until I actually started painting it and that's no joke. Um, so then I went back over with the panel liner again uh, just because I wanted to bring out those details on the arm. And then next I switched over to like a, it's a dull aluminum by ammo I used on this area just because I wanted a different color of, of metal and, and male is usually a little bit shinier but like flat like this. 
So I wanted to paint it like I've seen male colored and then same thing we're going to go over it with some panel liner to really bring out those details. So here you can see um, it, it looks a little tough at first like in terms of there's too much black but you'll see it quickly as it dries up. I mean you just get these phenomenal results of using that Tamiya panel liner and you can use any kind of dark wash, black wash. Um, so then the last step I did here with the metal specifically is I wanted to kind of highlight those top details because there were some raised details. So I did some dry brushing with some light silver just to try to make them pop a little bit more, right? We put the panel liner in the back, the highlights on top, really wanted to bring it together. So then um, she has her little bullhorn here. Um, and I really wanted to put some brass colors into this model. Um, I, I did silver on her on her armor parts. I wanted to do a little bit of brass. So what I did was I painted it with a light wood color and then I went over it with some metallic brass on the metal parts. And then what I'm doing is, just like I've shown you guys on my Panther, how I, how I do wood is do a light wood color and then do some brown for German dark yellow uh, wash by ammo. And then what I do is I take a little bit of enamel thinner and I just go over the middle parts where it should be cleaner, right? And it kind of gives you this dirty look um, along the edges. And then I took some panel liner and went over the brass details again just to make them pop and it looked really good. So moving on to the shield, again, I, I painted wood just like I always do with a light wood. And then I went over the metal parts of the shield with, a, it's, I think it's actually gunmetal. Like this gunmetal by Ammo is like becoming my new favorite steel color. It's just such a nice color. And I wanted to try some armor modeling tricks. So I actually put some chipping fluid over top of this. And you're going to see why I did this. So I'm going to use the same teal color as her... Um, loincloth whatever that big cloth was and I'm just painting it over all these little details um, and I actually decided to try airbrushing it on the inside just because I wanted to see if there's a difference with the contrast paints if you spray them or uh, paint them on and I actually didn't like some tide marks I got on some of these larger models um, uh, with painting like with the brush painting with a brush so I actually went over with an airbrush so then what I'm doing here is I took some water um, after that teal color had dried and I'm actually chipping it just like we would an armor uh, tank and I, I'm actually taking uh, a pair of, of uh, tweezers here and uh, just giving some light scratches on there so um, you can see it makes it look like chipped paint off the wood of a shield which would look you know right it's kind of a weathered look right and then the last step here is to take some light silver and do some dry brush highlights over all the edges again it kind of gives it a weathered look and because it you know it would polish the metal on the edges as it's getting worn and it really raises all those details and you see we did that without even having to put a wash on those details um, the next thing is to go back and paint her uh, sheath sword okay, so there's a sword in there uh, in the sheath so we painted that same Saigor brown um, over the leather bits because I liked how dark it was and then I painted uh, all the silver that same uh, silver color uh, and then went over it with the panel liner again, trying to bring out some details. And as it dried, those details really popped. So uh, I didn't capture me painting this bag, but I just painted it same leather brown as the other parts and put it on there. Um, then it was time to assemble the sword on. And um, here's our lovely bullhorn. And then I think um, it's coming together really well, right? So we're going to glue the top half. To her bottom half and really start to see this model come together and there i attached a shield as well and again you can see how that base with the snow and the rocks really brings it all together with the character it, it just it adds a little bit of something right setting the scene if you will so i went back to her axe and i, I painted um wood over the handle went over the entire uh the metal parts with same thing the gun metal i told you i really love that color for this steel it's a gun metal uh color by ammo I, I painted it on with a brush just because I didn't want to have to do with the, deal with all the masking. And just like I always do with wood, I used my brown for German dark yellow over top of um, the light wood color. And you can see how it really brings out the wood grain. And then same as the shield, I took the light silver dry brush and went over all the edges to make it look like it's worn, worn down and weathered. Now for her hair, I used this warm sand yellow because I always think of a Viking with like, you know, brownish, yellowish hair. Um, I don't know why. I guess maybe again that's just 
my own personal taste. So painted her uh, hair this nice blondish color. Uh, actually discovered another uh, hair band uh, that needed to be painted uh, metal color and then it was time to do her eyes so I started with black and did like kind of her, her, her back of her eyes and then I went over it with white to kind of give her, her 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 whatever that part of the white eye is called um, painted over her eyebrows with a nice brown color and then I took some blue for her irises and that is almost the last step um, I just painted irises, no pupils, because uh, it's really hard to see the pupils. Um, so then uh, the next step, I kind of shot some brownish shade again, just like I did on the leather parts earlier over top of the blonde. Uh, and then here we go, almost the last step. We are putting on this reddish skin tone onto her lips, just to bring her lips out so they stand out a little bit. And the last step we got to do... Um, after we get the lips and eyes on is to put a little bit of gloss on the lips and on the eyes just because they are a little glossy. Thank you guys for hanging in there and I hope you appreciate and like this video. If you do, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you all so much and we will see you again with another modeling video right here. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future builds.